Cross-cloud networking is a common topic among our customers as they deploy and manage workloads across multiple clouds. Hi, my name is Sri Nanapaneni. I'm a customer engineer at Google Cloud. Today, I will discuss Google Cloud networking connectivity services and a VPC design pattern for cross-cloud and on-premises communication. Let's do a quick refresher on Google Cloud VPC. VPCs are a global resource that spans across multiple regions. Subnets are regional resources within VPCs. VPCs can be shared with other projects within a Google Cloud organization. A shared VPC involves one host project and multiple service projects. The host project creates a VPC and the subnets, which are then shared with the service projects. A subnet can be shared with one or multiple service projects. With the help of IAM, users in the service project can be granted network user privileges to the shared subnets, which allows them to create resources within those shared subnets. Let's review what options are available to connect VPCs. Using VPC peering, you can establish direct private connection between two VPCs. You can peer VPCs across projects or even with VPCs in different organizations. VPC peering connections will exchange all subnet routes. So as long as the firewall rules allow the traffic, instances can communicate across all subnets in the peered VPC. With peering, you can configure whether or not to export or import custom routes, such as the routes learned via hybrid connections. Another option is Network Connectivity Center, or NCC. Think of NCC as a central management hub that orchestrates connectivity among its spokes. VPCs can be those spokes. NCC supports full mesh connectivity between the VPC spokes. In addition, NCC supports route filters for excluding certain subnet routes from propagating to the spokes. NCC allows you to scale VPC to VPC connectivity to a much larger number than standard peering. Let's move on to hybrid connectivity options. To extend the connectivity to on-prem or other clouds, customers can choose either VPN or interconnect. VPN creates IPsec tunnels over the internet, providing a secure connection. Cloud Interconnect provides low latency and high bandwidth private connectivity. Using cross-cloud Interconnect, you can establish a secure and high-performance network connection between Google Cloud and other public cloud providers. For outbound internet connectivity, external IPs can be associated directly to the VMs. However, many VMs do not need external IPs, in which case VMs can use CloudNAT for outbound internet connectivity. The VMs utilize a pool of shared public IP addresses provided by the CloudNet service to connect to the internet. To further secure outbound connectivity, Google Cloud offers both cloud next generation firewall enforcement and secure web proxy to provide deeper filtering based on HTTP and HTTPS URLs. Secure web proxy is a fully managed explicit proxy service that helps customers secure egress web traffic. Cloud next generation firewall is a firewall service that is fully distributed and can protect Google Cloud workloads from external and internal threats. It offers micro-segmentation, advanced production capabilities such as intrusion prevention service with TLS interception and decryption. Now let's review connectivity to Google Managed Services. When customers create Google Managed Services like Cloud SQL, Vertex AI, File Store, etc., these services are deployed in a Google Managed VPC. There are two ways in which resources in your VPC can communicate privately with these managed services. The first is private service access. In this method, a Google managed VPC is peered with your VPC using VPC peering. This allows all resources in the peered VPC to reach Google services. The second is private service connect. In this approach, there is no direct peering connection. Instead, there will be a PSC endpoint in your consumer VPC. This endpoint has an IP address from your VPC network. All right, now that we covered connectivity options, let's build a VPC design. To start with, let's create a project structure, a hub project, an infrastructure host project, and multiple application service projects. This project structure allows for the infrastructure and network administrators to manage the network resources in a central project, while application teams manage their workloads in a separate service projects. The next question is, how many VPC networks will you implement initially, and how will they be organized? We recommend a VPC structure that has a transit VPC, one or more application shared VPCs, and one or more optional services VPC. Let's break it down by VPC. The transit VPC in the hub project handles all external connectivity using HAVPN, interconnect, cross-cloud interconnect, or a combination of these services. 
For more in-depth information about hybrid connectivity, check out the other video in this series on the topic. The application shared VPCs are created in the infrastructure host project. To allow communication between hybrid networks and the application shared VPCs, we create a hub and spoke architecture using VPC peering between the transit VPC and the application VPCs. To support end-to-end -end communication, make sure to export custom routes on the transit VPC peering connection and import them on the other end. You should also advertise application VPC network ranges via the cloud router in the transit VPC to the hybrid networks. Now, let's connect the application shared VPCs to enable communication between them. NCC Hub simplifies the orchestration and allows you to scale, especially for those customers that have a large number of VPCs. Also, as I mentioned earlier, NCC Hub allows you to create full mesh and it supports route filtering. So you can choose what subnet routes to propagate per spoke VPC. Optional services VPC in the infrastructure host project can be used to consolidate the deployment of private access methods like private service connect and private service access to reach managed services. To ensure reachability of managed services from both external networks and application VPCs, and to address the limitations of transitivity, we propose establishing a HAVPN connection between the transit VPC and the services VPC. By creating separate services VPC, you are limiting the number of HAVPN connections you would have to create. Depending on your organization, you may need to create more than one services VPC, but we recommend keeping that number small. In conclusion, we came up with a global VPC design that supports end-to-end -end connectivity for applications and Google managed services from on-prem and other cloud providers. For more information on the topics discussed, check out the solution guide in the Architecture Center. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel.